It's one of the greatest cities on the planet. It's summer and the sun is about to set. I'm surrounded by bikes and racers of all shapes and sizes. It can only mean one thing. It's the London Nocturne. Welcome to the 8th Jupiter London Nocturne, a race here in the capital that gets bigger and better every year. The crowds are already turning out and we're not even at the sharp end of the racing yet. That comes with the women's and men's elite races later on this evening. And I'm joined now by a man who knows all about it. To be honest, he's a bit of a British racing legend, racing now late into his fourth decade, he won't mind me saying. And he's been a national crit champion twice. It's Dean Downing or Dino to his friends. Dean, tell us, why is this race such a big deal? I think it's one of the original big criteriums to come back in the UK and in, in the setting of London itself. Uh, 2007 was the first time we held it. I was second to a good friend of mine, James McCallum, and we're now teammates. But the crowds come out and it's got bigger and better, like you say, each year. I think last year's estimate of crowd was 15,000 people. For so many people to be compact in a one kilometre circuit in the centre of one of the biggest cities in the world, that's pretty special for all the riders involved racing it. And, I, I, lo I love that, the crowd shouting, it's, it's fantastic. This is going to be one of your last nocturnes, if not the last. Every year, though, it does attract some of the, the bigger names from the sport. We've got the likes of Tyler Farrer here tonight, Sky have put up a couple of riders. What's it like racing against the guys from the top level of, of world cycling? Yeah, over the years, we've had some, uh, some world-class riders here. Ian Stannard was a winner when he uh, went, went off and uh, lapped the field, and uh, Alex Dowsett as well. But I think they, they always come out here or come to this event and, and don't know what to expect because we as, as UK racers, we're in the middle of the, the crit season doing other events around the country. So we're all, you know, we're all trained on you know, race fit for this. So it's sometimes quite difficult. Some of them had a very big shock in past, but others have got stuck in and, and won the race, in fact. So it'd be interesting to race with uh, the likes of Tyler Farrar tonight. Because it's like that, because you're in the middle of the, the crit series, for the men and the women as well, does it mean it's much more of an open field? Anyone could really go ahead and win the thing? Yeah, well, the other events we're doing are team-based racing, so it's, uh, it's back to who, who crosses the line first wins. So, you know, teams will be working for certain riders, maybe. Uh, so that, that helps, but everybody gets stuck in, and it's, it's a fa very fast circuit. Um, everybody wants to win the Nocturne, so, including me, which I've never won it, but we'll be going for it tonight. Dino, thanks for the time being. Well, as Dean suggested there, it is a very fast circuit. Let's have a closer look now at what it takes to race right here at the Nocturne. The riders will have to negotiate the clockwise technical 1.1 kilometer Smithfield Market circuit, which comprises a number of sharp corners and a mixture of smooth and uneven terrain. The first right-hander after the start-finish straight is a tight downhill off-camber corner, which could prove difficult to negotiate at speed. And the riders will also be keen to secure a tight line into the final bend for a strong drive to the finish. Do you know, it's not really the smoothest of uh, racing surfaces, is it, Dean? What is it like to, to race around these corners on this tarmac? Yeah, it's not too bad. The finishing straight what we've got here is very, very fast. But in the dark, it's a little bit tricky when you get around the back of the circuit. There's some very, very tight corners. One's a pretty much of a dead turn, which leads up into a slight drag. And then you go through the market onto the back straight past the pits, which is also always very dark, but very fast into the last two corners. And it's, it's over very quickly, but it's all about positioning, getting into the corners near the front so you don't have to chase the bunches. So. The race is over even quicker for some because every year there usually is a bit of a crash. Someone has to go out early. Is that ever at the back of your mind when you're racing? Yeah, we don't like to talk about things like that. <laughs> it's kind of a yeah, taboo subject. But yeah, there's uh, 60 or so riders in this and um, everybody you know, sets off on the line very fast. But if you're at the back, it's very much like elastic band effect. You're going into the corners really slowly. The front are already gone and out of sight and you're chasing, chasing, chasing. So there's sometimes a few crashes, there is, I'll admit that, but uh, the difficulty is being at the back from the beginning and chasing, chasing, you have to use so much more energy to get to the front. 
So hopefully I'll be at the front from the off and... Uh, attack from the gun, is that what you're going to do? Is that your yeah, tactic? Well, that has been the tactic before. I know Alex Dow said attack from the gun and uh, in Stanard was the same and uh, you kind of... You get your own lines around the corners, which they're very tight corners. If you get your own lines around the corners, people are chasing, maybe there's an unfortunate crash and then you know, you're off in the, into the distance, into the darkness. Dino, thanks very much for now. Well, as you can see, the elite men's criterion really is the icing on the cake here at the London Nocturne. There's a race behind us about to get underway. In fact, let's have a look at what else has been going on today. The London Nocturne, as always, featured a jam-packed schedule comprising of no fewer than 11 races, covering everything from fixies to penny farthings. Some of the Nocturne regulars included the lead day Kermessa, which eventually saw Alex Minting taking the honours. Next up, it was the big turns from the big wheels of the penny farthing race. Always a favourite with the Nocturne crowd, Richard Thode repeated his victory of last year with the intense efforts of the riders and spectacular outfits bringing the crowd to life. The inaugural Brooks England Retro Track Bike Criterium saw a vast array of these vintage steeds powering around the Smithfield circuit with style and pace being rewarded in equal measure. The race fragmented early on and Thomas Zittle riding a 1960s Claude Butler Super Torino broke away to win. Will Downing was second on a 1983 Team Rally USA bike. The slightly more up-to-date Condor Track Bike Criterium was intensely competitive. Paolo Bravini was one of four riders from Team Cinelli Chrome who flew in from Italy especially to race and he brilliantly held off last year's winner Wayne Crombie in the final sprint. And finally, the IMI Mobile Folding Bike Race saw veteran Keith Henderson winning a turn folding bike as he proved the best of 81 riders across two heats and the final. And the IMI folding bike race has been very, very absorbing and the crowd have got behind the action. But here is the winner, Keith Henderson, replicating his finishing position of 12 months ago. His coattails flying in the breeze. Here is Philip Pateman coming up for second. Oh, yes, he's pleased with that. And on the left of our screen, Joseph Brown clinching third. But nobody had got the answer to Keith Henderson. What a storming ride by him. So a ridiculously jam-packed schedule here at the Jupiter London Nocta. These guys are about to set off in just a moment, so better not hang around. But coming up in a moment, some more of the more out there races on the schedule right after the break. So welcome back. We're warming up now for the first ever TFL cycle hire bike race here at the Jupiter. London Nocturne. I tell you what, these things aren't easy to handle. They weigh 23 kilos. That's as much as three normal race bikes. Would I race on one? You've got to be joking. But they've roped in some gullible celebs to have a go. Hold it steady, boys. And we're Rolf Copy, and we're at Nocturne. As long as I don't fall off, uh, then I, I should be fine. That's, that's the job well done. I have ridden a brass bike before. Um, not the best experience <laughs> at that time. I've been on a Boris bike once or twice for about five, ten minutes and then decided to put it back. Decided that was the safest option. I'm here for fun, and you know, I mean to enjoy it. Um, I'm going to win or lose. You know, so either or, it should be quite fun. I'm fit, so I'm pretty sure that it should be uh, not much of a challenge for me, but I'm looking forward to a nice leisurely start and stroll. Do you know what? I reckon I'm going to win. Well, the flag drops and a slice of history being made here. It's the first time ever we have seen the Boris bikes in action. This is the Barclays Cycle Hire Race. They've got four laps of this 1.1 kilometre course to complete. Look at the style of the fellow. He, he's actually got his hands down at the bottom of the carrying basket. The two boys from the Kingston Whalers here are um, sharing the workload. As you see, the second one coming through into that aero tuck position. He's having a bit of a go here. Oh, look at this. He's not happy, is he? Joseph James is pointing to Liz Hartless and saying, my goodness me, I'm being dropped here by this uh, athlete that's just gone by me. And that's Kazim Ajobi, but here are the three going under the finished gantry and they're into the concluding lap. 
This could be the defining moment. Look at the face here, sucking in the wind as he's looking for that next right-hander. And this is Ryan Carus on the front, being pursued by Leo Tong. This is the winning effort. He's trying to raise the tempo here. The attack on the left, is it going to uh, overhaul Karos? Tong trying to get on terms, but look at the speed. The leg speed is really, really impressive. Ryan Karos takes it by about a bike length from Leo Tong, and there is the victory salute. Third was uh, Sayeta. I'm dying, but that was great. I'll give it, I'd thumbs up to those that do that on a daily basis. Me? <laughs> See, there were mad professionals in there. Yo. All of a sudden, I got laughed about five times. I tell you what, they're going to need to get those Boris bikes back soon, otherwise it's going to be a, a fine to pay if they're not careful. Now, listen, I'm joined by someone who's an expert in cyclocross, Helen Wyman, British and European champion, but no stranger, Helen, to the crits, of course, and uh, the London Nocturne, certainly one of the highlights of the women's calendar. Yeah, definitely. It's a really good event. It's always well raced. There's massive crowds, and that's nice to race in front of, and you get good TV time, which is always really important for our sponsors, so it's definitely a highlight on our calendar. And especially this year, women's racing has gone up a notch in terms of interest in Britain. It has. It's absolutely huge. We did the women's tour this year, and it was genuinely one of the best races I've ever ridden, and I've ridden so many races, it's ridiculous. And the people just came out to support us, and most of the people didn't care we were women. They just sort of got excited because there was a bike race and the whole convoy and, and everything. And the Saturday and Sunday, there was tens of thousands of people in the town, and it was just every town was so busy, and it, it was genuinely amazing. I, you know, I want to do it every week. <laughs> it was so good. Thousands already here tonight for the Jupiter London Nocturne. Your teammates at Matrix Volpine warming up behind us. I know you're a bit of an old hand, so you don't have to worry about doing that <laughs> until the last minute. But is it going to be quite a, a tough race tonight? And who are you keeping an eye on? Yeah, I think it's going to be a really tough race. Um, Katie Archibald is on fantastic form currently. She's won anything she turns her hand to at the minute. And she's a specialist in criterion racing when she's not winning world track medals. Um, and so she's really strong. We'll be watching her. Plus, Amy Roberts is here from Wiggle Honda. And she's won the last two races she rode. And then there'll be the, the normal riders like Eileen Rowe and Charlene Joyner and riders like that. So it should be a really exciting race. And we've got a strong team. And if we ride like a team, I don't see any reason why we can't win. I'll let you go and join the rest of them so you can warm up. Why don't we have a closer look at the rest of the women riders taking part in tonight's elite criterion. this year there's so many strong teams and it's a really great field especially been looking out for Eileen Rowe because she's leading the tour series and Kay Archibald you know she's she's been amazing throughout but you know there's there's people you can't let go of the road even if they're in smaller teams you know I think it's gonna be a very aggressive race so it is a case of getting as many people up there at the finish and then obviously if without the finish we'll be working for our sprinter so well, I think uh, Amy Roberts is here by herself as a, a wiggle rider, but obviously the, the jersey sticks out, and Amy will stick out. She might be a bit of a marked rider, had a, a few good wins recently. Um, uh, we think it's going to end up in a sort of relatively largest break. See, like it's going to be an episode that splits. So uh, we're just going to try and get as many riders in that break as possible, and then um, you'll see who we've got for the sprint. Uh, obviously, the first one's going to have to be Kay Archibald. Uh, she's shown her dominance already this year, and she's on fire. So I think. I think everybody would be silly to let her go, so that's obviously one of the women that we will be watching as well. Um, and obviously Helen Wyman would like to keep an uh, eye on Helen Wyman because she was going really well at Redditch in the last two series, so she's hitting some form. Let's join our commentators Brian Smith and Hugh Porter. So there's the line-up then, ready for the Rafa Elite Women's Criterium. And we've got a star-studded field here. Number one is Katie Archibald, the World Team Pursuit champion. And she'll be one that will be out to try and get a victory here. But look at this. A sense of urgency at the front. A delivery of pace straight from the start. And that's young Penny Rousen of the Matrix Fitness team. She's decided to go right from the start. Well, down at the bottom here, they'll swing back on themselves. And then the course ramps up. And then it goes left under the arch and then weaves its way back towards the finish. But this is a determined start here by the leader. And two girls in pink just behind 
and that's uh, the team of Wendy Miller Reynolds. In fact, they've got nearly all the team near the front here, and it looks very much to me as a strong representation of Pearl Azumi Sports Tours International. And right there as well in the thick of the mix is Gabriella Shaw. Yeah, a lot of the uh, riders from the Pearl Azumi Sports Tours International team towards the front in the black and purple outfits. And uh, that includes Katie Archibald. Yeah, Katie Archibald is a world record holder for the team pursuit and she's in very, very good form indeed. But the one thing about this course, the speed is so high, it's very, very difficult to ride away from the rest. Yeah, the speed these girls will be sitting at pretty much constantly throughout this race will be touching 30 miles an hour. But uh, plenty of riders up there for uh, Matrix Fitness as the two of them just almost come to uh, grief there on that corner. Well, the uh, the queen of the course, that's Hannah Barnes. She's not taken the start here this time. She's won four times, and last year it was a thrilling sprint to the line when she beat the Olympic champion, Laura Trott. But the field more or less all together here as they roll through the line. Well, it does look as if the Matrix Fitness team de have decided to uh, be really aggressive at the start of this race. Look at this, Keddy Archibald looking across and uh, going with her is Nicola Juniper, the 32. Oh, it's a crash! Well, one of the riders uh, overcooking it there on the corner and has collided with the barrier. Yeah, that was uh, one of the young girls from uh, RST, so unfortunately it could be all over for her. And look at this now, the field is fractured and it's the crash that's caused that and there are about eight riders going clear now and one or two of the big players have read the move on the front it's Juniper. Yeah, reaction from Eileen Rowe and the Stanley Primal Red kept trying to come up to the riders in front. Well, Juniper is the rider right on the front here. Archibald is there second. She's got a teammate with her as well. And also, Matrix Fitness Volpine have got three riders in this leading group. And two also in there for Perlazumi Sports Tours. One from Wendy Miller Reynolds in the pink as uh, Eileen Rowe tries to make it across to this front group. It's going to be interesting to see the kind of tactics that Archibald adopts here. She uses a blistering pace, that's why she's a world champion for the team pursuit, normally to blast the field away, but on this kind of course, that isn't going to be the case for her. And I tell you, the rider swinging over now is going to be one of the big favourites, that's Juniper. Well, the race is approaching near enough the halfway distance now as Katie Curtis swings round the right-hander there. Curtis representing the Starley Primal Pro Cycling Team. Well, this race is all strung out at the moment. And uh, Katie Archibald just coming across the line yet again. She looks to be loving the circuit round at Smithfield. And their eyes are as wide as saucers as they stare through the failing light. But the big crowd are totally absorbed by the action. Well, you can just see the light starting to fade, and Katie Archibald burst onto the scene in the last couple of years. She only rode her first competitive road race earlier on this year, so she isn't overly experienced at uh, these kind of road efforts. And you can see just ahead of Archibald the tail of the peloton. Now, this could cause a problem as they try to thread their way past the uh, back markers and I just caught a glimpse of Juniper a little bit farther back from Curtis there she is so Juniper is third on the road but it's Archibald at the moment Lady. now this is a problem yeah this is a danger when you start to pick up uh, back markers because they will not know that she's coming through and she has to make them aware of this because they could cut across her almost like that in the corner so you need to be vigilant and uh, at the moment it's Archibald with a bit between her teeth here and she sprouted wings as she tries to give the rest a slip establishing quite a useful advantage yeah she's uh, stuck uh, behind some of the back markers at the moment she's just giving a shout now making them aware going round that corner nice and easy back onto the front just looking behind to see where Katie Curtis is so Katie Archibald who has wings on her wheels and she really can apply the pressure and turn the screw and distance herself from the rest with her great speed but I'm amazed that she's getting clear here on the left you can see Juniper out of the saddle and in the wheel of Juniper is Curtis as they try to bridge up to Archibald and Scott it looks as if she's in two minds what to do whether to continue this effort or wait for the chasing group to come up behind you just see Juniper again looking behind all the group behind look as if they're safely past that group of back markers. Juniper just looking at the back of uh, the leader as they swing right, and this is where it ramps up the little hill on the circuit. This is Archibald now trying to go away. This is classic. Katie Archibald, oh, she overcooked it. She's, oh, look at this, she's collided with the barrier. Now then, has she hurt herself? 
Well, it looks as if she's up and gone, but what an unfortunate incident for Katie Archibald. Just when she was on the attack, she just comes around this corner, realises she's gone too fast, just checks, and it's not enough, just falls against the barriers, and it uh, looks as if she's OK. And looking back there, Nicola Juniper looked to see just how bad that fall was, but what it has done is it's given the opportunity to three riders who are going away, and now we've got Gabriella Shaw, Pearl Azumi Sports Tourist, the teammate then of Archibald, who now resumes her pedalling, but she's well back, and we've got the two at the front. That is Shaw, and with her is Juniper, and just behind is Katie Curtis. And Curtis in the red for Starley Primal, trying to come across to the two leaders in front of Shaw and Juniper. Well, that gap does look bridgeable, and I can tell you that Katie Curtis is a very good sprinter. Comes from a Welsh uh, track background, and she was actually the Welsh National Road Race Champion, and she's also won medals at junior level in the Europeans on the track. So if she gets up, that'll be a very interesting ingredient if the three remain at the front for the sprint. And the chase in the peloton is led by Wiggle Honda's Amy Roberts. And I'm just thinking that uh, Matrix Fitness have missed out here. They might join on the chase. This must be so frustrating. You can see Curtis, well, she's within touching distance of the brace of riders ahead. But Juniper and Shaw are the two riders that are at the sharp end of the contest. Well, Pearl Azumi Sports Times International lost to Archibald in the previous lap. But it does look as if they have got Gabriella Shaw in with a shout of victory here tonight. Well, this is the... Uh, chasing group behind and uh, whilst they are applying the pressure at the front the working duo have still got complete control here well, Katie Curtis is still working hard trying to come across to Shaw and Juniper and again the same distance the previous lap it must be so frustrating and of course Curtis now is uh, a pilot in the paracycling and we may well see her in the Commonwealth Games but there we are there's gaps appearing in the peloton behind as Juniper sweeps around that right hander well it's not only Fast and Furious at the front for these two girls Shaw and Juniper but uh, Fast and Furious in the peloton as well that's why it's all strung out and gaps starting to appear well quite a significant difference in age between these two ahead Juniper at 32 and her breakaway companion Shaw just 19 from Wrexham so obviously Juniper is the rider with far more experience well, uh, Juniper is the girl at the front from Echelon Rota. The Pearl Azumi Sports Tours International rider and behind her is Gabriella Shaw. But uh, the rider Katie Curtis stuck in the middle between these two in front and the peloton still hasn't made it to the front as Matrix Fitness head the peloton. Juniper from uh, Brentwood had a very good win uh, earlier in the year when she won the uh, Tour of the Reservoir. Well, we're getting very close now to the bell, and it looks like these two are going to be uh, the two title contenders. Down the uh, finishing straight for the uh, penultimate time, and you can just see the crowd at the side banging in the boards. What a tremendous crowd there is for this women's race. It is an electric atmosphere here in this Rafa Elite Women's Criterium, the penultimate event of the Jupiter London Nocturne. They've turned out once again in their thousands. Well, which way is the pendulum going to swing? Is it going to go to the youngster at the front, or is it going to be the more experienced rider, Nicola Juniper? Well, it does look as if it's going to be between Juniper and Shaw. Curtis now a little distance between the leading duo, so... We might see a bit of finessing as we come up to the final few corners. Well, Curtis is still holding off the uh, peloton, so she may just cling to third, but it's all about who has got the greater speed here as they are getting very close to the finish. A reaction here from one of the RST riders, and that could be Grace Gardner, the young 16-year-old, and the... Uh, sister of Lucy Gardner, the uh, former junior double world champion. Yeah, one of the backmarkers just ahead, and there is Curtis. If they were just to ease back fractionally and start watching each other, then Curtis could capitalise on that. But I don't think they're going to do it. On the left, then, it is Juniper. And leading into the final corner here is Gabriella Shaw. It looks like Shaw's going to be forced to lead this one out. Not the best position to be. Here comes the challenge then by Nicola Juniper. Juniper has got the greater power. There it is, a victory salute. Juniper takes it from Shaw, Curtis hanging on for third, and here comes the peloton, who's going to get the sprint for fourth, it's going to be a tight one, 
And fourth place, oh, there it is. Fourth going to Grace Garner, ahead of Amy Roberts of Wiggle Honda. A fantastic result for this rider here. Nicola Juniper for Echelon Rotor, and uh, she just stops as she sees some friends in the crowd. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest wins of her career, and look at the smile. I tell you what, it won't get any broader than that. A delighted, delighted Nicola Juniper. She wins here the Rafa Elite Women's Criterium. So, a great result from Echelon Rotor's Nicola Juniper, followed in by spirited rides from Gabriella Shaw of Pearl Azumi Sports Tours International and Starly Primal's Katie Curtis. Good showings from Grace Garner and the current Tour Series leader Eileen Rowe, who finished in sixth. So, a fantastic elite women's criterion race here at the London Oxford, and joined now by the winner, Nikki Juniper. Fantastically well done, Nikki. How was it? Uh, it's a tough race out there tonight. It was, uh, it was fast from the gun. Um, some big teams out there, and uh, I knew it was going to be a tough 30 minutes, but um, I just went out there, wanted to give it some, and I did, so I'm really pleased. Big teams, but yours isn't one of them. Why is that? Uh, I ride for myself. I ride for a shop in Pershaw called uh, uh, Team Echelon Rotor. Uh, it's a personal sponsor. I've just joined them. So, um, but you know, in crit races, you well, having a team doesn't always work to your advantage. You can you can just go out there and do it and uh, and use a peloton. The peloton's your team, so you know it worked well tonight. It was good. Any any sort of tips? What should we look out for in the men's race? What what do you think they'll be doing <laughs> after seeing you race? Um, it's a bit of a different race, really. They've got a much bigger field, so it's going to be a lot tighter for them going around the corners. Uh, I just say beware around the corners because your back wheel's jumping out a lot, but they're all experienced riders, they've done this before, they're all doing the tour series, so I'm sure they'll smash it up. Nikki, really well done. Fifth time lucky, right in the nocturne. Fantastic win, well done to you. OK, so let's have a look at the riders taking part in the men's elite criterium next. I've never gone particularly well around this course, so uh, again, we'll, we'll see, we'll give it a go. We've, uh, the team's going really well. You know, we can attack and sort of express ourselves without fear of you know, really letting your sort of teammates down. Yeah, I think all of us can win it on our day, so got a lot of cards to play, so hopefully it'll be the best man out of us lot that wins. Mr House always does quite well, and he, he, the crowd love him as well, a local lad. He's, he's, he's done well a few times. Got a nice lad here from Sky, from uh, Yorkshire Boy, so that's good, especially with the Tour de France starting in Yorkshire this year, so... It's going to be a good one. I've never actually, I haven't done a, a, a crit or a nocturne for years, so I know a lot of the guys racing, I sort of raced them all when I was younger. And they're all keen to give me a bit of an education in crit racing. Had a good classics campaign in the spring, and then just finished up the Giro uh, last week, so it's been a busy year, but so far so good. You know, a lot of the British teams, this is their specialty, so I think they might be the ones hurting me today, <laughs> but we'll see. It's very different to what I've been used to, so it's been hard, but in a completely different way compared to Pro Tour racing hard. So we know who's going to be a threat and we know who's not going to be a threat. And I think we just have to make sure we've got those people covered, really. It's probably a one-off race and everything's on the line for tonight and nothing else. It's, you're only going to get one chance to win this race once this year and it's tonight. There's the line up then, it's a, a good field here. 61 riders get the flag at the start of the Schwalbe Elite Men's Criterion. This is the concluding event of the Jupiter London Nocturne and the massive crowd have all stayed here for this one. And one of the riders stuck in the start line there, but uh, he'll get a lap out and, and join the race as we go around this circuit here. You can just see that uh, daylight is gone. We uh, start in darkness. And this is what a nocturne is all about. We've got one or two big stars in this event. We've got CJ Sutton, the 29-year-old on the Sky team. He won the Kern Brussels Kern. We've got Nathan Haas, the Australian on Garmin Sharp, a winner of the Herald Sun Tour. And also in there, his teammate, Tyler Farrar, the 30-year-old, who's won stages in the Giro, the Vuelta and the Tour de France. Yeah, Tyler Ferrer has just come back off uh, a third place in the last stage of the Giro d'Italia, but it's the new team on the block, NFTO, that lead the way at the moment. It'll be interesting to see how these visiting pros will uh, handle this course because the British uh, lads are certainly the best in the world when it comes to racing around tight circuits like this. James McCallum on the front.
Yeah, James McCallum on the right-hand side, and he has won the Nocturne in the past. He has been the British Circuit Race Champion, so he obviously wanted to start right from the front. Yeah, McCallum was the winner back in 2007, and he comes from Glasgow. He'll be competing in the Commonwealth Games. And NFT will still lead the way with James Losley williams followed by one of the riders from Rally. They're obviously riding to a game plan here, the team of NFTO. But really, as I've been saying all along, the speed around this course is so high, it's very, very difficult to get clear. It's only, possibly, if there's a crash or the peloton sits up. Well, they have started like the women started, fast and furious. And uh, just noticed that uh, the uh, Kiwi circuit race champion in the white jersey there of uh, Mike Northy for Madison Genesis is leading the way with uh, one of the riders from NFTO in the black just behind. Yeah, that's Mike Northy, very good rider, comes from Auckland. And of course, it was a Kiwi that won this event 12 months ago with Tom Scully. Now then, Christian House, one of the most experienced men in the peloton, riding for Rafa Connor JLT. House goes to the front. Well, Christian House is one of the most experienced riders of the Nocturne, and he is uh, one of the favourites to win here tonight. So, again, starting early, lining the peloton out. This is a little pinch point at the back of the circuit and there's a slight ramp there and when they come off that then they lay the bikes over to the right and then that goes up to the second right-hander into Long Lane and that of course leads into Smithfield Street. I tell you what, they really have started very, very fast. You can just see the peloton of 61 all strung out and probably not the best place to be is at the back. Yeah, very, very difficult to move up that line, particularly at this high speed but the uh, big men at the front are reading this very, very well indeed. Another injection of pace right on the sharp end of the contest from Madison Genesis. Yes, uh, Tobin Horton leads the way for Madison Genesis. He's taking with him Rafa Condor, JLT's Felix English, and the man we were talking about earlier, James McCallum of NFTO. The 27-year-old from Guernsey, who is in superb form, he comes into this event having just won the last round of the Tour Series in Canary Wharf. So, he's now beginning to apply the pressure and it's beginning to fragment a little bit. Yeah, one of the riders from Wheelbase trying to come across to make it four in front and uh, a reaction from the peloton as Rafa Condor JLT tried to control things. Yeah, different teams as well here, Brian. This could uh, play into the hands of uh, the rest of the field because uh, with four teams, well, three at the moment, and uh, they are the key players, aren't they? NFTO, Rafa Condor JLT and Madison Genesis. Well, Tobin Horton for Madison Genesis really is on some good form at this moment, but... Uh, Felix English is the right out of the front for Rafa Condor JLT. Jimmy Mack for NFTO is just sitting at the back. Is the rider from Wheelbase, I think it's Adam Diggleway, trying to make it for. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Schwalbe Elite Men's Criterium. This is the concluding event of the Jupiter London Nocturne. One of the uh, Sky Riders at the front, I think that's uh, Chris Sutton, is uh, leading the chase. But uh, it's going to find it hard to uh, bring these riders back because these riders are probably the best at this type of circuit racing. They've missed the move, Sky. And Edmondson, the 21-year-old from Leeds, is left with a giant task here to try and whip the pace up at the front to try and get across. And he's not going to find any allies because with these squads clear, their teammates are going to just be more than happy. Well, of the uh, British uh, UCI teams, the only team that seemed to be missing from the front is the team of Rally. So I would expect as we go back to the front of the peloton that Rally might be doing some of the chasing. I love the sign on that arch as they come underneath. It says dead slow. They're actually going around here at an electric pace. Well, it's warp speed, so you can just see the gaps between the wheels. This is Britain's best racing. This is what they are the best in the world at. Tobin Horton still leading the way from Duggleby, McCallum and English at the back. Yeah, Tobin Horton in the form of his life. He's pin sharp here as Duggleby takes on the pace setting now. And this gap, well, it looks pegged. It's round about 100 metres. Yeah, just coming through the pits area for the peloton and I'm pretty sure that uh, Jerry Pridham for Rally, the sports director, is barking out the instructions to the Rally team to try and do something about this. Kaniski was near the front there for the uh, Rally team, one of the uh, two Frenchmen on that squad, as the four continue here to tap out the rhythm that is commanding the race. Well, Duggleby is an esteemed company here with uh, Horton, English and McCallum, but he'll be loving every minute of it. He's a 29-year-old from Leeds and he's a Great Britain development para-pilot, so he may well be selected to uh, 
steer one of those uh, tandems in the Paris. So right at the front still then, it's uh, McCollum who is, uh, well, he's actually announced his retirement from the road, hasn't he? Yeah, he's decided after this race tonight that he wants to concentrate on the track for Team Scotland at the Commonwealth Games. But James loves this race. He's won it in the past, also finished second. So it looks as if he's on for a good ride tonight. So McCallum in this uh, front group, uh, no doubt uh, thinking about that sprint. He's got some pretty hot company with him, particularly Felix English. Felix English is uh, blowing hot at the moment, having clinched at one of the round of the Tour Series in Aberystwyth. A tight sprint that was. And it's a double for wheelbase at the front, leading the way down the finishing straight funnel as the crowd at the side, which has been magnificent throughout the whole Nocturne series, banging the boards. Well, this Schwalbe Elite men's criterium is living up to its reputation as we sight the peloton here. But it was a matter of lighting the blue touch paper right from the start, and they really have been fanning the flames. And at the front of the peloton, it's Mr Experience Christian House with Graham Briggs, but a reaction again from Team Rally. Yep, Rally here trying to do something about this. They've got one or two handy riders in this lineup here. They've got Kaniski, who's a world track champion, and Bulu, and they're both in very good form, particularly Matteo Bulu. Yeah, and it is one of the Rally riders at the front again. They have got numbers in this peloton behind, but most of them down towards the back. Mark Christian is also another rider that could possibly get in the mix if there is a, a counter development, but they're going to run out of distance. These four are maintaining the advantage. Yeah, rally again at the front, and that's Bulo, followed by Madison Genesis, and they have got their Kiwi circuit race champion right up there in second place. Yep, he's sitting right in the wheel of Bulo. Well, he's not going to contribute to the pace because he's probably happy that with the teammate that he's got ahead. I would think that Rafa Condor, JLT, Madison Genesis and NFTO are more than happy with the representatives in this group of four at the front. It's all a matter of whether uh, Duggleby could uh, create a surprise here, but uh, he's in with some very, very distinguished company, particularly when it comes to the sprint for the line. And straight on the front again, it's the man from uh, Guernsey, and that is Horton. Well, Duggleby isn't shirking his workload. He's trying as hard as he can in this uh, group of four, and he might... Uh, mount a surprise in the last few laps we just have to wait and see but you can just see the peloton still in one long line this is really really fast here around smithfield Duggleby does a lot of racing on the manchester velodrome he is a team pursuit champion so he does have the uh, track speed in the legs but quite happy to be on the front here and uh, doing quite a big turn is the man from guernsey and that is horton it does get really dramatic as the uh, light fades we're into the evening here in smithfield and this is uh, what Nocturne Racing is all about. And you see the cameras, the flashing. This is an electric atmosphere here. And they are loving every minute of it as Bulo still continues to try and stretch the peloton out. Well, they are one of the top teams in uh, Britain. They have missed this breakaway of four and they have been left to do all the chasing at the front of the peloton. Well, McCallum sitting third back, sitting quite high there and looking at Duggleby at the front. I'm just wondering what's going through his mind. He's in very, very good form. So is Felix English in second position. It's going to be some sprint if they remain together. Well, three of the four in front we know are on form, and that's uh, Tobin Horton, Felix English and James McCallum. Their known factor is Duggleby, and uh, I'm pretty sure the riders in the breakaway won't know too much about him either. Well, the Schwalbe Elite Men's Criterium is uh, bringing the Jupiter London Nocturne to a grand finale. They've been uh, here, the spectators, all day with a variety of compelling uh, action. Different bikes, folding bikes, penny-farthing bikes. We've seen the Boris uh, City bikes, and now we're watching the Elite here. Well, these four of McCallum, English, Horton and Duggleby have pretty much about uh, 15, 20 seconds in front of this uh, peloton and it's fast moving at that, led by Rally. So they have to continue with their effort. Got to take your hat off to them, though, because at this kind of speed, they're whistling around here at 30 miles per hour. It is uh, fair play to the efforts that they're putting in. Rally still on the front. You just see the uh, riders behind lining up, Mike Northey, Chris Sutton of Sky just behind, and this is a big effort from Rally trying to close it down in the last few laps here, but uh, again, everybody doing their share of the work in this front group of four. Tobin Horton takes that right hand, and I must admit he is looking very good tonight, tapping out a good rhythm, he's found the good gear, here he comes then, Horton swinging into the finishing funnel as Duggleby takes over. Well, it's hard to even call the winner here because uh, 
the uh, fastest rider on paper, I would think, would be Felix English, the youngest rider in this uh, front group for Rafa Condor JLT. But it's still Rally leading the way in the peloton behind. It's like Tom Scully, the winner last year, trying to make a move up the outside of the peloton here. But it's still Rally then, uh, spearheading the charge behind the four. And just look at the uh, crowd in the right-hand side, lining the uh, finishing straight area. Tobin Horton just looks behind. He wants a bit of help from the uh, riders behind. But just look at the gap. The gap is starting to come down. Yes, it is. They are chipping away at the advantage. They're getting a little closer here. Is it possible then for one of the riders to jump and bridge to the quartet that for so long now have been in charge of this race? Well, up towards the front is Tom Scully for Madison Genesis and also uh, two experienced riders there, Dean Downing and Adam Blythe. And it's uh, just behind them, Team Sky's Chris Sutton. Yeah, they are getting closer. Felix English takes the corner there and English then leads the four. And it's a big effort here by Felix English at the front because the peloton behind are only about 12, 14 seconds, so they have to go all the way to the line. The group behind is just a, a lapped group. The bunch are just behind them, as we see James McCallum asking for some information on the finishing line. That's the group behind the leading four, but this is the main peloton now, and uh, they are going to pick up that group for a lap. And it's uh, NFTO leading the way here in Dean Downing. Scully just behind Adam Blythe in third place, and they're possibly thinking of a finish for Adam Blythe. Round that corner once again, they're getting very, very used to that. And, of course, Russell Downing, the brother of Dean Downing, was a winner of this event back in 2009. Russell Downing, who broke his collarbone a few weeks back, He's ready to resume his racing in the next round, we understand, of the Tour Series. But here are the four, and they're still in control. Yeah, James McCallum for NFTO at the front of the black. Tobin Horton just behind. Then we've got Dougalby, then Philly Singlish. So it's uh, still all to play for in the Smithfield Nocturne. Looked like Horton was trying to uh, go clear of the leaders there. He was out of the saddle in a determined mood and trying to jump away. Yes, and these teammates have come to the front of the peloton for Madison Genesis, but it does look as if these four riders are going to be fighting it out for the win here. So it's Horton followed by Doggleby, and then behind him it's English, and then right at the back it's Jimmy Mack himself, the sprinter from Glasgow. Well, it's uh, full on here on the finishing straight, and uh, Tobin Horton has made his big effort, and uh, this is the penultimate lap. They're going to hear the bell, and we're going to see a fantastic finale here to the Smithfield Nocturne. We're inside the concluding 1.1 kilometres now of the Schwalbe Elite Men's Criterium, the final event of the Jupiter London Nocturne. And we've got four in the shake-up here, and right on the front, it's Horton then, the 27-year-old from Guernsey, that looks across at the rest. Well, Horton is at the front, and he's already shown his cards. He has been on the attack already in the penultimate lap. He's told the others he isn't happy bringing it down to a sprint and wants to try and attack it. But four riders being away all the time, they are committed, and once again, look at Horton, full of riding, a flat-out sprint. This is when it ramps up a little bit, and he's trying to blow the riders out of his wheel, and Duggleby is having to react here to try and bridge because he's lost a... Oh, he's gone down! Duggleby has gone down! And has that delayed the other two as well? But what he hasn't done, it hasn't hindered Horton. Well, I tell you what, that was a big off there, and the riders behind had to check themselves slow ever so slightly, and it's thrown it all open for... Uh... Tobin Horton to try and bring this home. Well, Duggleby was struggling there, that last shot, to try and get back onto the bike, but what he has done, it's given Tobin Horton the advantage, and Felix English, he's trying like uh, Billio here to try and bridge into the wheel of Horton, but he's not going to do it, going to run out of distance. Here comes Tobin Horton. Tobin Horton's going to win the Schwalbe Elite Men's Criterium. Second is Felix English of Rafa Conda JLT. Now then, did Jimmy Mack hang on to third? He's coming down that finishing funnel. The answer to that is yes. McCullum takes third and winning the bunch sprint, it looked like Ed Clancy to me of Rafa Conda JLT. Yeah, what a magnificent finish there, and unfortunately for Duggan, crashing out in the last lap, which uh, paved the way for the man in the right-hand side there, Tobin Horton, to take his first-ever nocturne victory. But nothing must be taken away from him because he was super aggressive, and where it ramped up from the corner at the bottom, he was already attacking. Yeah, he had attacked the penultimate lap and attacking from the front there, so a fantastic victory for Madison Genesis. So the winner is Tobin Horton, second Felix English and third James McCollum. Kind of still hasn't really hit home, that's two, two races in a row that I've won and I can't believe it, yeah. 
Such a great atmosphere, such a great race. Well, exactly. I mean, confidence must be sky high now for you. Yeah, it certainly makes a difference when you've, uh, you know, you've just run a race and you're coming into your next one, and uh, it certainly makes a difference in the confidence. So, um, and yeah, it, it pulled it off again. So great. And so there it is, the eighth winner of the Jupiter London Nocturne sees a first win from Madison Genesis Tobin Horton, Felix English with a strong second place, and James McCallum of NFTO rounding off a glittering road racing career with a spectacular podium finish for him. So no sooner has the race been won, they're striking everything down here at the London Nocturne. You can't sit still here in central London, which is exactly what these two guys didn't do, Dean Downing and James McCallum, Dino, Jimmy Mack. Your last Nocturne, and you put on a real show, Jimmy. Third, podium, fantastic. Yeah, that completes the, uh, the full house of first, second and third. And uh, we're here seven years ago, Dean and I, in the very first Nocturne, first and second. And uh, it's quite a nice way to go out, I think, both for our last Nocturne. So, yeah, pretty chuffed with tonight's performance. Good team performance, Dino. Yeah, we had uh, Adam Blythe in one of the first breakaways. Other riders brought that bike straight away. Jimmy Mack was in the next one, and that stuck. So it was nice to, uh, you know, ride out in for the top 10 or something like that, but great to see my, one of my best buddies on the podium again. And, you know, really enjoyed tonight's Nocturne, it's been fantastic. You must have rode more, than, more of them than anybody, so how did tonight's compare to previous years? I think the momentum this event's had over the years, it's just grown and grown and keeps getting bigger and bigger. And tonight, I say, it was definitely the biggest crowd I've performed in front of. The whole finishing straight was just, you know, it was, it was a, the noise was unbelievable and that gets you through it. And before you know it, the race is done and, we're standing here talking to you and it's just again the nocturne never never lets you down it's quite telling dean isn't it that is the domestic based riders the riders doing the likes of the tour series who are doing well in recent years because they're used to these kind of high tempo city center criteriums that's it we all the riders they warm up well on the rollers and it's straight off from the gun um you know riding 50 k's an hour around corners and uh, i think some of the boys the, some of the world tour boys you know, found that hard tonight. Tyler Farrow, the Sky Boys. Yeah, CJ Sutton was in there in the, in the mix at the end. But, but um, you know, Tyler Farrar, I'm not sure. But um, it's, it's very, very difficult to go from the gun and keep it going for you know, nearly an hour. So uh, we did that tonight. It's difficult to keep a career going as you head towards 40, isn't it? <laughs> that's me. Yeah. yeah, that's you. <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm not there yet. Jimmy's got something else to look forward to. We'll get onto that in a second. But uh, what next for you, Dino? Yeah, I've... I've uh, I've got another five or six weeks left, uh, hoping to retire at the Sheffield Grand Prix uh, and then help the team try and get in some more events for this year and see what see what next year brings. Best of luck with that. And Jimmy, what about you? Commonwealth Games. I think it's only 47 days to go, not that I'm counting. Y you are? <laughs> yeah, I am. It's a, a fairly, fairly tail end into you know, a very, very mixed career, but the, the last seven years and... You know, I'm just so pr privileged to stand here with one of my best mates and you know, an all-round great guy and a fantastic bike rider and be standing here speaking to you guys as a professional athlete. For me, it's a career's, you know, a dream's been sort of came true now, so pretty chuffed to be here. Well done. You got on the podium as well. Good team performance, Dean, as well. Thanks both very much indeed. And thank you to you for watching the 8th London Nocturne. A fantastic night. Great racing once again. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for your company. See you again next time. Bye-bye.